Hi, welcome to the second of my uh, YouTube series about how to set up and run your own solar array. In the first video we talked about how to give yourself a uh, quick little energy audit, reduce your uh, usage. What this is going to do is give you a number. When you look at your power bill, it will say how many kilowatt hours you went through. Hopefully you have a company that comes out and reads the meter, or at least uses a uh, mobile truck to uh, pick up your readings and you're not getting estimates. If you are, you should give them a quick call and make sure uh, they come out and give you an accurate read off your meter. Um, what that number does is let you know what kind of power usage you go through. Uh, once you have that, you can start figuring out how big of an array you want to build. There's basically three ways to go with a solar array. You can go small, go big, or go home. Go small means you're going to put up two, three panels with a small inverter, and all you're going to do is you're going to take a chunk out of your power bill. Downside to this is all you're doing is taking a chunk out of your power bill. It's going to take a long time for that array to pay for itself. The plus side of it is you can probably put together a good size array of even up to five panels with a decent inverter for still under $1,000. Uh, mounting, I mean, it's all do-it-yourself. Uh, the other way to go is go big. Uh, you're still talking about being hooked up to the grid. What you're going to do is put a ton of panels up on your roof. Maybe load up the whole thing. South side, south, any south facing surface is going to have a panel on it. What this does is you can actually get your power meter to spin backwards. Uh, if you get to the point where your meter is spinning backwards, you really need to give your power company a call. Uh, if you are producing more than you consume, if you have an analog meter, the kind of the little dial that actually spins, then uh, your meter will actually spin backwards. And when you get a read, your power company will be very mad at you. You need to be uh, on a special plan for people with solar uh, arrays. Um, what this does is any power you overproduce is going to be fed back into the system. Now you're feeding back power during the day, which is peak hours. So the power company will actually pay you money for that power. They'll pay you wholesale price for it, and when you need to buy power back, back you'll be buying it at retail, but it's better than nothing. The, uh, they're also probably going to come out and install a separate meter that uh, tracks what time of day you're feeding power back in. Um, they may not even put you on a special schedule. It all depends on your area. What you really need to do, though, is uh, if you are going to build a solar array, call them up and make sure that you can hook this up into your system. Now, to go small and go big, you're going to use a grid tie inverter. This plugs directly into your wall socket and supplements your existing power supply. Uh, it's going to regulate uh, to 60 hertz or 50, depending on what country you live in. Here in North America, or at least in the United States, we uh, run off a 60 hertz system. All AC current, 120 volts. You just, uh, I mean, literally, you have an inverter, you just plug it into the wall, and you have power. Now, what you can do is when you have a kilowatt, if you have a kilowatt meter that I showed in the first one, plug your inverter into this, and then plug this into the wall. It tracks the power usage in both directions. So it will be able to tell you how many kilowatt hours you're producing uh, as well as using. Um, the other, the uh, third and final setup is go home. You tell the power company, kiss off. I don't even want to deal with you guys anymore. Cut those stupid black things hanging in my backyard. What you're going to do is set up batteries uh, in an attic or somewhere where you have access where you can work on them. If you have a walk-in attic, it's probably, uh, you could probably use that, but if it's a cramped, confined area where there's a lot of heat, especially during the summer, probably not a good idea. You'd want to set it up anywhere where your existing power supply or your circuit breaker uh, box is right now. You need to be able to get to them, you need to be able to, to clean off your inverter, clean any filters, and not let dust get to the stuff. Uh, what you do is you have all your uh, solar panels feeding into a charge controller. That's going to charge up the battery. Uh, all these, uh, I don't know what they're called, deep cycle batteries, uh, which are quite a bit different than uh, car batteries, but there's a lot of videos about that stuff. Uh, what you're, we 
you charge up your batteries during the day with any excess power you're not using, during the night you run off your batteries. Uh, the downside to this is you're not generating any extra power. So you can't, you know, nobody's buying extra power. You're storing it. If you overfill your, if you get to a point where you're overfilling your batteries, any extra power generated is completely wasted. Also on the downside with the, uh, that setup, it's the most expensive. You still need a grid tie inverter, but now you've got to buy all these batteries and a charge controller. The other downside, uh, you can see I don't like this method, but the uh, third downside is that what happens if there's a lot of cloud cover? Maybe you have an entire week with rain. Well, then your batteries aren't topped off, you're slowly draining them off, and eventually you can get to a point where you have no power. And then you've got to start from scratch on a sunny day. Does anybody, does any one of us want to be without power? No. Uh, more than likely, if you're watching this video, you are connected to the internet, usually through cable line going through the back of your house, so you have an access to power. Uh, the Go Home system is really good for garages, uh, maybe you don't have an attached garage. I don't. Ha I have a detached garage with no power going to it. It would uh, be advantageous for me to run a battery setup out there so that I can turn on lights or run my compressor. It's not something I do all the time. Uh, it's just easier than running overhead lines out there. So that's the pluses and minuses of each setup. What I uh, what my videos are going to be all about when I finally get down to making uh, a full series is putting together your own solar panel. Uh, I put mine together out of a combination of glass, plexiglass, and aluminum. All three are readily recyclable products, all renewable resources, uh, renewable to a degree that they can be recycled infinitely. Uh, I use no, I didn't use tempered glass. I used sheet glass. Um, I ordered my solar cells off the internet. The, they cost me about a uh, buck seventy-five each. Uh, there's thirty-six to a panel. I picked up a nice package that included enough cells to do three panels plus some spares in case any break, break in transport. Plus, I was sent two extra spares beyond what I ordered uh, in case any break in transport. Uh, it came with tabbing wire, bus wire, which is a much thicker. I've already got all my tabbing wire cut, so it, I can't really show it. Uh, everything comes coiled around these cardboard spools, and it also comes with a flux pen. Uh, flux pen costs two bucks in an electronic store, so it was kind of a nil point. Um, the only there, there's a lot of videos out there that explain how to tab solar cells. Um, I think it's kind of getting repetitious at this point. The only thing I will say is uh, for my setup, uh, you want the front of the cells to be as flat as possible. This is one that I already did. I don't know how well the camera will be able to see that, but the top of that is completely flat. Um, the cells here are going to be pressed directly against the glass. I kind of don't want to touch these too much with my fingers. Uh, fingerprints reduce the uh, quality and once you're done with these you're going to want to wipe them down with alcohol anyway to uh, remove any fingerprints. But uh, you want the surface to be completely flat because, well I'll show you the process later, but the real trick to getting them completely flat is uh, you don't need to use any solder on the front. These, A lot of this tabbing wire comes pre uh, tinned, so all you need to do is press down on the surface. Uh, I use a 40 watt soldering iron with station and I picked up a chisel tip for it. The flat tip is really important for squeezing out all the excess solder and uh, being able to keep a very flat surface. Other than that, uh, there's no real trick to it. I will say something that was left out in a lot of other videos as a little trick that I've learned just from soldering uh, different types of electronics. One thing that you should not leave out of your kit is a good pencil. 